Hey guys, this is Steve over at Cookout Coach. If you've ever found yourself wondering if maybe a Myron Mixon H2O water smoker is right for you, or possibly one of the Vulcan gravity feeds, this is the video for you. Hey guys, this is Steve from Cookout Coach, live on location in a very hot and humid Georgia today to test and compare two premium smokers that I believe are often overlooked by backyard enthusiasts like us. And the reason we do this, I think, is because when we see the Myron Mixon H2O or the Myron Mixon G33 Gravity, we associate it with big meats, catering companies, competition teams, not you and me on the weekend trying to cook, you know, a couple racks of ribs for family and friends. However, Myron Mixon Smokers also has a 36 inch H2O if you want to go down that small and a G9 Gravity Fed Smoker that I believe are perfect for the backyard patio. And here's why. So to test these smokers today and see the differences between them, what we're going to do is we're going to cook a pork butt and a rack of spare ribs on each of the two smokers. So before I give you the ins and outs on how the smokers work, let's get our meat seasoned up and get them on the pits. So to get all of our meat seasoned up today, we're going to use three different seasonings. We're going to use It's Incredible from Heaven Made Products, The Gospel from Meat Church, and then Honey Hog Barbecue from Meat Church. Now, we're just going to go with a, a light coat of It's Incredible for that all-purpose. Next, we're gonna come back. We're gonna hit it with the gospel from Meat Church. Give it a pretty good coat of this. Get those colors in there, some more of that just general barbecue seasoning you're looking for. And since I injected these up last night, um, I'm not looking to flip them over and get that fat cap. I'm not real worried about that. And lastly, I'm gonna throw on the honey hog. Cause I love sweet barbecue. There we go, those butts are ready to go. Let's move them out of the way. All right, now we got some ribs I picked up fresh from the butcher this morning, so they were already cut down. All I did here was just removed some of the flap that was still on there and uh, some fat, some extra fat. There was a little, little much for my taste, so I just took that off real quick. These are by no means competition tripped ribs. We're gonna hit the same thing. We just laid down the It's Incredible. Now we're laying down the Gospel. Now we'll lay down some Honey Hog. Now these ribs felt pretty sticky. Um, and I'll pat them in. If your ribs don't feel sticky, you know, feel free to use mustard or olive oil or whatever. All right, our meat's all seasoned up and ready to go. But this cook's really not about the meat. Let's go ahead and get these on these two awesome smokers. Everyone knows what an offset stick burner is. Even people that don't know barbecue know that when they see an offset stick cooker, that's where barbecue comes from. Well, with the Myron Mixon H2O series, you still get that stick burner mentality. It's just no longer in an offset box. It's underneath of a water pan in an insulated box, which does a couple of things for you that you're gonna love on late nights. You know, that water is gonna act as a heat sink. It's gonna help you hold heat. It's on top of what it does to the meat. Um, the fact that it's all insulated, you're not going to have to burn a quart of wood to do a cook. It's going to be a lot more uh, resource efficient than it would be for, say, an offset stick burner in a traditional sense. Now, when you talk about a 36 inch offset stick burner, which is where a lot of backyard enthusiasts go, um, there are some good ones out there, don't get me wrong. The, the Yoder stuff is always great. Um, the Old Country Pecos, to me, is the Dollar for dollar, if you want a offset stick burner in your backyard, I think that's the best buy. But people step up and they go up to the Brazos with a little thicker steel to try to get some more thermal insulation from that. Those are things you're going to get 
right off the shelf with an H2O series. And and while the prices are different, they're not that much different. Um, when you look at fit and finish and the quality of the product, you know, I think it comes down more to user taste at that point than, oh, this thing's too big for my backyard. Well, no, it's, it's actually going to fit great. Another advantage of the H2O series to an offset stick burner at 36 inches to me is with that offset stick burner, a lot of times because you have a hot fire in that box right next to it and those metals aren't that thick, or even if they are, just because of the um, relative location of that firebox, there's a good 10 to 12 inches there that you probably don't want to use if you're cooking a brisket and lay it out there because that's going to cook several degrees hotter than the other side and you're going to have to rotate it one not. With this water cooker, with all the heat below the water pan coming up even, you have no hot spots like that. You're going to have an even temperature all across the cooking grain. Also, when we're talking about 36 inch cooker, you know, as an offset with a tube, you lose some real estate with that second shelf if they even include it at all. You might be able to fit one or two racks of baby back ribs. With the H2O series being a square, you know, it's like a split level house. You get the exact same footprint above and below on that first and second shelf, which leads to a surprising amount of real estate to cook on. One last thought on my initial impressions of the H2O series is everything is extremely heavy duty and they seem to be looking to keep improving their design. Uh, for instance, the, um, the slam latches, as you'll see on this one up here, weren't an original fixture, but now they are in the current ones. Um, I always love a company who's willing to make changes when changes are needed or can improve a design. So those are my quick first thought comparisons between a traditional offset stick burner and what Myron Mixon has going on with their H2O series. Now let me show you how this thing works. To get this thing fired off, we did the traditional documented on Barbecue Pitmasters Myron Mixon way to get it started in that we took a full 20 pound bag of charcoal, we ripped it open, left the bag in, sprayed it down with lighter fluid, and lit it off to build our bed of coals. I gotta tell you, while that's not something I do at home, there was something a little refreshing about doing that. It just felt right. Before we lit off our coals, I should say our water pan was already fully filled with water. You have to be careful about that. This isn't an optional thing in these cookers. If you do not have the water in the water pan, you could potentially warp that water pan, which makes it uneven, which will just cause you a multitude of problems. They're welded in. You'd have to go get it cut out and a new one put back in. Um, yeah, don't do that. If you get one of these, make sure your water pan's full of water. It's an H2O cooker. You bought it to cook with water. Once we got our cold bed good and hot, it was just like any other stick burner. Went and selected a few logs, threw them on there, watched the temperature come up. The temperature climb was impressive for how big this cooker was that we're using today, and yet extremely efficient. I'm very impressed with, with the wood management that I've seen today on this cooker. Okay, so let's talk about the Gravity Series. Now, at the recent comp that I was at, the Gravity Smokers were there just full on. I felt like every other smoker I saw was a Gravity Smoker. And um, had I not been in that comp, I wouldn't have realized quite how popular they are. However, when you break it down, what a Gravity Smoker is, it really becomes a set it and forget it smoker. You load that charcoal chute with a full chimney of lit charcoal and then you backfill with unlit charcoal. Your smoke wood goes down in the bottom and when the charcoal embers fall, that's when you get your smoke. They recommend using it in conjunction with a barbecue guru, which is a temperature controller. I can tell you, I've been using it for just a little bit with this temperature controller and I have not seen the temperature move off of what I told it to be. And when I think about that, I think about all these high-end pellet grills I've been seeing coming out recently and a lot of people love them and that's absolutely great. But if you want something that's set it and forget it and you don't necessarily want to go pellets, you want to stick with charcoal, you know, you got your charcoal brands you like, you like sourcing your own wood. I got to tell you, the Gravity series from Myron Mixon Smokers, you know, if it's just small for your for your back patio, that G9 might be the one you're looking for. But let me show you how this thing works. So like I said, we're just going to load up the charcoal silo with a full lit chimney of charcoal. Once that's down in there, I'm just going to go ahead and fill the rest of the charcoal bag and just fill that silo up. Last thing I do is throw my smoking wood. Today we're using apple right in the bottom here underneath the, the charcoal silo. And set my uh, barbecue guru today. I've got it set at 300 degrees and it's staying right there. So we've had an interesting development on the H2O cook. 
our ribs have been on there now for about an hour and a half. Um, I was told that, that this water smoker isn't like necessarily having a pan of water in say my Weber Smoky Mountain, but it will actually change the way it cooks. And that my bark's gonna be set on this at two hours, which I can't get to happen on my Weber Smoky Mountain. Then David went on to tell me that uh, I might wanna check him in an hour and a half. And we just checked him and that bark's pretty well set, set enough for me to go ahead and wrap it. So we're gonna pull these ribs out of the H2O and wrap them up. Check out the color we're getting from that meat church and uh, heaven made products combo. I'm real happy with that. We're gonna go ahead, butter, brown sugar, honey, like we normally do. Flip it over. Get my glove off. A little bit of brown sugar. Backside here. Okay. And some honey. We'll go ahead and wrap this guy up. Now before I close it, I'm going to add a little bit of, um, this is just some injection that I had left over from the pork butts. Uh, it's mainly apple juice, some white vinegar, salt, sugar. I thought, you know what, since I got it, let's go ahead and give it a shot in a uh, foil wrap and see what it does. All right, we'll get them back on the smoker, see how they finish. So we've hit about the two and a half hour mark in this cook, and I just checked the ribs on the Myron Mixon G33. Um, with water, these are acting well like ribs I'm used to. Um, say if I did my Weber Smoky Mountain, that bark won't set at two hours. But it looks like in about two and a half hours, we're ready to go, so we're gonna get them out. Get them wrapped up and get them back on. Right, here we are at the two and a half hour mark. Again, that, that meat church combo with heaven made products to put a beautiful color on all this. Let's flip it over. And again, we're just in your standard butter, brown sugar, and honey. And so that's what we'll do on the back here. Brown sugar. Bit much, I'm gonna have to move that. There you go. Some parquet. Some honey. And just like with the last ones, we'll add a little bit of my pork injection. Just to help with that braising. So this is what a pork butt's looking like after two and a half hours on the Myron Mixon H2O smoker. Um, the bark is set, it's got a beautiful color. I mean, this is different for me, but let's go ahead and pan it and wrap it up. And when I'm wrapping up a pork butt, you know, I'm just trying to get a little more richness, a little more sweet, because it's such a thick cut of meat. And a little honey on top. Right. 
And again, just to help with that steaming, braising process, you know, we'll just toss some pork injection in there, the pan with it. Not a lot. And we'll boil it up and get it back on the smoker. So here we are at the three hour mark on our ribs. These ribs are the ribs on the H2O. Um, I picked them up, they felt great. You know, I'm not used to cooking ribs in three hours, especially on something that uses water. So I tempt them out, they tempt at 202. I mean, we're good. So what we're gonna go ahead and glaze these with is uh, some Jack's Old South Myron Mixin Tangy Sweet Rib Sauce. And now I've got this in a foil pan, just an attempt to keep things a little cleaner. That's all. Those are pretty. All right, there it is. We'll get it back on the uh, smoker. Let that set for 10 minutes, and then we'll try some. Okay, so 10 minutes later, here are our ribs from the, um, the gravity feed. Now, time-wise, these ribs were about the same, three hours. And again, we're gonna be glazing this with the uh, Myron Mix and Jack's Old South Tangy Sweet Rib Sauce. The difference between this rack of ribs and the rack of ribs that went on the H2O is that because the bark set so fast on the H2O, those ribs spent an extra hour wrapped up as opposed to these so I'm curious to see how that's gonna come out in the end but in the meantime we'll get these back on the gravity let that glaze set for 10 minutes and then we'll try the difference all right guys three hours later we got our ribs off our H2O and our ribs off our gravity feet so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna cut one from each we're gonna do a little taste test see if we can see a difference all right guys here we go starting with the spare rib cooked off the H2O it's got a great smoke ring on it the bark set nice, the glaze was great. Mm. That's amazing. All right, let's try the one out of the uh, gravity feed. All right, so now this is the one out of the gravity feed. The difference is while the one in the H2O was in foil for an hour and a half, this was only in the foil for an hour. So. Let's see what we got. Still a really good rib. It might be a touch drier than the one that came out of the H2O. But that's probably due to the um, fact that it was in the foil for less time. And you could change that. You can run that gravity dry if you want to, but I just wanted to see what it would do in a, a wet setup. So, still a really good rib. Fantastic. Okay, guys, so here we are at the four hour mark. Uh, when I'm more traditionally used to pulling the pork butt off, the one in the gravity, it's uh, got the color and the bark I'm looking for. So, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with a little brown sugar. Parquet, a little honey, and some of our pork injection. All right, we'll cover it up, get it back on the smoker. Next time you'll see it's when it's done. Okay. So we just got our pork butts off both smokers at the exact same time. It's blowing my mind right now. If you remember, we wrapped on the H2O at two and a half hours. Our pork butt had a beautiful color. We wrapped it up. I tempted it at that point in time and it was running like 140, which all right, made a little, a little bit of sense to me. Kept rolling with the uh, gravity feed and it behaved more like a typical smoke at my house that I'm used to. And in about four hours, it had the color and bark I was looking for. It's temping out at about 160, which made sense. Put it back into the gravity feed. I don't know why, guys, but it finished out at the same time. So, 
Let's go ahead, let's get a taste, see if we taste any difference between these two butts on these two different smokers. All right guys, so here we are. Like I said, we cooked these hot and fast. They're about 300 on both cookers. Here's the one that came off the H2O. This is the one that came off the gravity. Um, and all the stuff we talked about, like I said, they finished at the exact same time, which just amazes me. But now's everybody's favorite time, uh, mostly mine. Let's get a bite here. Let's pull from the money muscle. Let's get a little bit to sample from both of them. And I'm gonna hit these off with a little bit of uh, Myron Mix and Jack's Old South Sweet Heat Mustard Sauce. All right, guys, let's get a taste. All right, guys. So this is the Money Muscle of the Pork Butt that came out of the H2O water smoker. That is fantastic. I grabbed the end of the money muscle specifically. I wanted the piece of bark to see what that was like because we said it so early. It's a good bark. It's not chewy. It's got all those little flavor pieces you're looking for. It's just fantastic. All right, let's see if we can taste the difference in the gravity. Okay, so here's our pulled money muscle from a gravity feed pork butt. Here we go. That's so good. That's fantastic pork butt. Here, here's the interesting thing. One was a stick burner. One's a gravity feed that used chunks of wood to get its smoke. Both of them have great smoke flavor. Tell you what, the whole point of this video was a comparison between these two cookers. And I honestly don't know if I could pick. I think the H2Os are so cool. What it did with setting that bark so early, that's blowing my mind. But what the gravity did was just as good. That food came out tasting just as good in both the ribs and the pork butt. You're really not gonna go wrong either way with this. Like I said, if you're out there and you're looking to step up your backyard thing, you're looking for one of the Langs, one of the, the, the Jambo Patios, one of the Lone Stars, one of the big Yoders, you know, take a look at these Myron Mixon smokers. Here's how I would decide. If, if you're the kind of person who wants to have an offset stick burner, go with the H2O. I think it was a blast to use all day. I've never used it before in my life had no problems running this gigantic pit today. If I had a 36 inch on my back porch, I'd be ecstatic. Now, if you want to be more set it and forget it, I hooked the barbecue guru up to that gravity feed all day. I never touched it. I looked in it to make sure the water wasn't uh, all evaporated out at one point. That was it, and at the end of the day, I got great pork butts off both. So if you have any other questions that I didn't answer in this one, go ahead and hit me up down in the comments. Uh, Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. Let me know if I missed something that you want to know. I'll do my best to get the answer for you. But till next time, y'all take it easy.